Hey guys, Wade here with Texas Duck Dogs, Callback Retrievers, Eager Retriever, and On The Hunt Dog Fuel, life-changing ingredients for your dog. Check it out, onthehuntdogfuel.com. It can ship straight to your doorstep. Today's video is about AKC pedigrees, registration certificates, titles, where they're found, what they mean, online databases that can help you research breeders and see if they're being honest. Uh, and do your own research and study of pedigree. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, I'm going to get started here. This pedigree is from one of my, the, my very first Labrador. My dad bought this for me as a gift for my 18th birthday. So this is 22 years ago. And I had no clue about registered. My dad thought if it was AKC registered, it must be awesome. And a lot of you out there watching this video may think that too. However, once you get into it, you realize that being AKC registered doesn't mean a whole lot about the actual purpose for which the dog was bred for. Within AKC registration, it can be a show dog, it can be a companion dog, it can be a hunting dog, just a gun dog, a meat dog, it can be a hunt test dog, or it can be a field trial dog. And all of those are AKC registered Labradors. So just because you're buying an AKC registered lab, that doesn't mean that dog will hunt. It doesn't mean it would be a good show dog in the confirmation ring. It doesn't mean that you can run field trials. So you need to do your research, do your homework, and be careful about what you buy. Rex Carr said, buy the most puppy you can afford. So whatever your budget allows, buy the highest end because your initial investment in your puppy is the most valuable investment that you're going to make because your end product and the end result of what you get is going to be greatly impacted. A $50 lab puppy off of Craigslist is probably not registered or at the Walmart parking lot for $150 or your buddy's lab down the road for $600 it's registered versus two master hunters that have bred together with OFA certification, hip, elbows, eye certification, EIC, CNM testing, all that stuff versus two field champions bred together. And now you're looking at the spectrum from $6,500 a puppy, $3,000 a puppy, $1,500 a puppy, $600 a puppy, $200 a puppy, $500 a puppy. And, and they may all be AKC registered, but there is a huge difference. So I wanna help educate you guys that are out there searching for a new puppy or maybe have a dog and you're wondering what you've got your hands on. So this certified pedigree there's registered names. This was my female, Cashin Sandy Creek Sandy. Sandy Creek was my grandfather's kennel when he ran American Foxhounds. I've got an old jacket from the 1970s that he had made for him and, and my grandmother uh, that say Cashin Sandy Creek Kennels. He was located right there in Ravenna, Texas, right down from the Sandy Creek Ranch. So a long family legacy there of, of working dogs. So I named my very first registered Labrador uh, cash in Sandy Creek Sandy. Anyway, all that being said, when I look at this old style pedigree, the printing's different, everything, there's no titles on here. Let me show you a more modern pedigree. Um, and, and this dog is actually related to that dog. Th this is a dog that essentially replaced that dog. Um, and so this is cash -ins, Sandy Creek, Texas Cowboy. Um, it tells his whelp date on there. Uh, he was born in 2004, so this is reaching back there. But on this pedigree, Miller Creek's Texas Drake. There's no letters in front of his name and no letters after his name. That's important. But if you look at his sire, there's letters in front of his name, and then there's no letters after his name. The letters in front of his name, FCAFC. That stands for field champion, amateur field champion. An amateur field champion means that the guy that ran him in the trial was an amateur and not a professional. He didn't get paid to train dogs. He trained his own dogs or a, a pro trained his dogs, but he ran them himself in the field trial. That's what the amateur designation is for. It's about the handler, not the dog. So a dog with an AFC title could be just as good or better than a dog with an FC title. It's just designating who the handler was. All right, so on this pedigree, I'm going to look. Here's one, Miller Creek waterfowl indy master hunter mh at the back of a dog's name means master hunter so up here fc afc dare to dream uh this dog is his call name is cosmo so your dog's registered name 
Dare to Dream, that's the registered name, isn't always his call name. The call name is the name you call the dog. This dog was called Cosmo. So they would send him on Cosmo, or they'd say, Cosmo, here. But his registered name was Dare to Dream. So that's important. You know, your, your dog's call name does not have to be in its registered name, but often it is. My dog's call name was Cowboy. And his call name was in his registered name. Anyway, FCAFC, field champion, amateur field champion. This dog, historically famous dog, very successful on the trial circuit. Um, so anyway, there's that. If you have letters at the back of the name, MH, Master Hunter, SH, Senior Hunter, JH, Junior Hunter. At the front of the name, I've already explained the field champion, amateur field champion. I was looking, oh, here, here, down here, FC, but then this one's NAFC, MD's Cotton Pickin' Cropper. He's a yellow dog with an NAFC title. That's very significant. The NAFC is National Amateur Field Champion. When you see that N in the front of FC or NAFC, it was the number one dog in the nation that year, and it won the National Retriever Championship or the National Amateur Retriever Championship. That's where the NFC and NAFC comes from. So there's two examples of paper copy gold seal AKC pedigrees. One old, one more modern. Now let's talk about this. Every dog comes with this registration certificate. It's a purple and white. It tells the dog's registered number. It tells who the dam and sire are. This is not a pedigree. This, this doesn't tell the full lineage or history of the dog. So if you have a registration certificate, you, it lists the owner, Wade Cashin. It should list you as the owner. And you can call into AKC or go to their website and you can order a three or four generation pedigree to go with this registration certificate. Now let's talk about orthopedic foundation for animals. Uh, well, one more thing. Before we leave the pedigree and the registration certificate, I've got one more document here that I would like to show you. This is a dog registration application. This is going to be what comes with your puppy from the breeder. So when, you, when all you have is this sheet and it says male, female, and there's numbers designating the color, and on the back is a, you know, the owner's signature saying, I transferred this dog directly to the owner's. Once you have this, you can actually go online on the modern ones. You can go to akc.org forward slash dog registration. You can register your dog online in five minutes, type in your name, pay a $25 or $35 fee, and bam, the dog's registered. But until you go online and do that, or you fill all this out and mail it to AKC with payment, your dog's not registered. It just has a puppy registration certificate. Again, this is a registration application. This is not a pedigree. This is not your registration certificate. So without the registration certificate, your dog's not registered. So complete your registration application, often referred to as puppy papers. But these aren't actual papers. These are not actual AKC gold seal uh, pedigrees, which is what people refer to when they say papers. You got papers on that dog? Uh, what are you talking about, papers? I mean, no. They're talking about this certified pedigree from the American Kennel Club. Okay, now let's move on to orthopedic foundation for animals. So I've got two uh, OFA certificates here. This is for wingtips, real McCoy Micah, uh, a dog that I owned that was out of the Trumark bloodlines. I wish I had her pedigree, but it's in a display box um, on, on my wall, so I don't have that. But anyway, orthopedic foundation for animals frequently referred to as the OFA. Is your dog OFA certified? They're talking about OFA hips, orthopedic foundation for animal hips, orthopedic foundation animal elbows. So this right here, based upon the radiograph submitted to the consensus was that no evidence of hip dysplasia was recognized and the hip joint conformation was evaluated as good. So the, the modern, this is an old dog. I mean, she was born in 2003. No, that's when the application for this was done, 2003. This female was born in 95. But the newer OFA certificates look a little different, but it has the same info. Here's the green one for the elbows. Based upon the radiograph submitted, the consensus was that no evidence of elbow dysplasia was recognized 
elbows are normal. So there's an example of OFA. Now let's transition over to the digital media. We live in the modern world. All of this stuff most of the time can be accessed and viewed um, on your laptop from a, a computer. So let's start, since we just covered OFA, let's go ahead and go to the OFA website ofa.org ofa.org so you're buying a puppy and your breeder says oh yeah hips elbows all that's done well you should ask for the registered name or do you mind if i see the registration certificate of your female i would like to you know for to know for sure this dog's registered most people aren't going to ask that but let's say he gives you her registered name i mean for one how do you know a breeder's not lying to you how do you know that the dog that they're saying is the dog they're selling to you is actually the dog they're selling to you? Well, it, it's hard to verify that unless they give you the registration certificate. But let me tell you, there's some scrupulous breeders out there. Uh, in fact, that original dog uh, that I had, this old pedigree over here that I had of Sandy, my very first lab, when she died tragically, uh, at, at 19, 20 months old, I had a man in town call and ask me if he could buy her papers because he had a litter on the ground that he couldn't register because his bitch wasn't registered. He called and offered me money to buy this pedigree and her registration certificate so he could falsely register his puppies. So, buyer beware, Okay. You're on your own. You got to do your research, read reviews, ask for paperwork and all that stuff. Use a reputable breeder so you don't get snookered or lied to. Anyway, moving on. Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. You can type in the dog's registered name right here. So it pops up a box. So I'm going to go ahead and type in one of our, our uh, dogs. In fact, I'm going to use Don uh, Ewing's dog, Ziva. Her registered name is Callbacks, Light of Hockley Creek. So I'm going to type that in right here. Callbacks, Light of... Hockley Creek. Now I'm going to hit go. And it's going to pull up any dogs in the database that match that registered name. There it is right there. Callbacks Light of Hockley Creek. You click on that. You can scroll down. It shows birthday, black lab female, registration number of the dam and sire, her registration number. But down here, you keep scrolling. OFA hips. Tests were done August 2nd of 2021. They came back good. OFA elbows, August 2nd, 2021, they came back normal. So let's say you want to get your dog's hips and elbows tested. There are numerous vet clinics across the, the state that can help you with that. However, there's a few that actually specialize in working retrievers and OFA hip and elbow scans. Do your research, see what you can find. Uh, a vet that's got experience with working retrievers Usually, you're going to pay between $320 and, and $350 for OFA scans for hip and elbows. And then that vet will help you submit those to the OFA, Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. However, if you're using a knowledgeable vet that has been doing this for years, like Dr. Ed Acock at the North Louisville Animal Clinic uh, in the DFW area or Mary Tatum. Uh, Dr. Mary Tatum has been a, a leader in OFA for a long time. She was at a clinic in Houston. Uh, she's not there anymore. You'll just have to, to Google her to find out where she's at. Um, Josie Ranch Animal Hospital, also in the DFW area. Some very qualified, good doctors there. Uh, outside of that, I don't know who to tell you to go to, but those doctors that are experienced with working retrievers and OFA hip and elbow scans, they can take those radiographs, those x-rays, and look at them right there and give you... Hey, this looks good. Man, these look really good. That should be an excellent. And some of these doctors that are really good always get that right. And I happen to know a couple of those. Anyway, um, so do your homework. Go get your hips and elbows tested if you're thinking about breeding. If you just want to know if your dog is sound, uh, period, whether you intend to breed or not, it's a good idea to get the OFA hip and elbow scans done. 
So then you can research, if you're buying a puppy, you can check the dam and sire once you get their registered name, and you can look in the OFA database for yourself. Let's keep going. Let's say you want to see their pedigree. The, the most useful site for that is this one. It's called Hunting Lab Pedigree. So I'm going to go to their homepage. It's a free website. You can access it from any laptop or computer. So we're here at the OFA, I mean, uh, at the huntinglabpedigree.com website. So now let's type in another one of our dogs. Um, I'll go ahead and use Ziva again. I don't know actually if Ziva's been entered in this database yet. The only way a dog's listed in here is if, if somebody has entered her in. I kind of don't think I've entered her in because she her owner hasn't decided to breed her yet. We're waiting until she's titled, hopefully as a field champion, before we do that initial breeding. Um, she's in our competition field trial program doing very well. Um, so let's see if she's in the database. Callbacks. Light of Hockley Creek, which I don't think she's in here because I haven't entered her and I don't think her owner, Dawn, has entered her. And correct, there's not a dog that matches Callback's Light of Hockley Creek. Now you have to spell it right and get the punctuation right and all that stuff, but no matches. So let's go to a dog that I know is in this database because I bred to him. Uh, his name is Man. He's also a puppy from our breeding program. Callbacks, Lean Lad O'Grady. So his registered name, Callbacks. That's our breeding program, Callback Retrievers. Lean Lad O'Grady. He's a son of a dog named Grady. That's where that registered name comes from. Very creative. Grady is wonderful dog, top producer, um, national champion national amateur field champion in 2011 and his son traveler won the 2012 national amateur field champion uh grady is a proven historic producer of strong lines so anyway uh let's go to let's go to this dog but this dog's call name is man so here i've typed in the registered name under hunting lab pedigree there it is callbacks lean lad or grady here's his profile some owners will go ahead and enter you know, pictures of their dogs. Whoever's d updating the database, they can choose to load a picture or not. Um, and now, his call name, Man. That, that's what we call the dog. Man, here. Come here, Man. And then when we're sending them, we call him Man. But it's got OFA hips and elbows, good and normal. It's got his whelp date. It shows his owner here as Kevin McDonald. It shows the breeder as myself. The website, callbackretrievers.com. It shows that he had one derby point. Um, he's two and a half years old now, and he's got a fourth and a qual and jam and a qual and is coming on strong. The last two months for Man have been his strongest month, so we're excited about what he's doing. But here you can see Man's pedigree. You can see his sire was the 2011 National Amateur Field Champion, Cody Cuddleen Gray. You can see that his mom, the dam, call back something to talk about, our female Taka, who's a qualified all age and a master hunter. So if you see QAA, that's qualified all age. If you see QA2, that means the dog has earned the qualified all age status twice and now has the QA2 title. So you go on from there and you see FCAFC code blue. You see Mrs. Lean Matt, qualified all age. You see the 2014 National Amateur Field Champion, Texas Troubadour, owned by my neighbors, John and Martha Russell. A tremendous producer, um, has produced numerous field champions, national champions, and numerous dogs on the derby list. Just one of the top producing studs of all time there, Texas Troubadour. FCAFC Dance Hall Gal. Here's a female from a stellar pedigree that earned her field champion, amateur field champion title. So you see oh, the 2005 national field champion, amateur field champion, Club Meds Road Warrior, Chopper, Hall of Fame dog, and then 2007 National Field Champion, AFC Candlewoods, something royal called Wendy, a phenomenal producer, female, and tremendous athlete. FC AFC Weezer Retriever, FC AFC Candlewoods, Miss B's, uh, two time National Amateur Field Champion, two time Canadian National Amateur Field Champion. So when that NFC or that NAFC has a C in front of it, that's a Canadian national champion field, uh, field champion designation. That was Evan Starlene Mack. So anyway, 
Here, let's say I want to go further into this dog, man's lineage. I can click on this pedigree, on this dog's registered name. I just clicked it, and now it has pulled up Chopper, the 2005 NAFC, AFC, Hall of Fame dog, Chopper. And it shows you some stats. It shows you, you know, he's got no hidden color, his genetic coat type. Derby points, 53 derby points, field trial champion points, also referred to as all-age points. He had 139 all-age points. It shows he's EIC clear, CNM clear, OFA hips good. If all that info's been entered in the database, it's there. And now look, we can see Chopper. We see Chopper's parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. And you can go back, you can keep going on this stuff. Here's the, two, the 92 national field champion and the 90 National Amateur Field Champion, Candlewood Super Tanker. So you can click on Super Tanker, and now you can see Super Tanker's pedigree. There's a picture of Super Tanker from the early 90s, and you can see some of his stats. There's a write-up. You know, somebody entered a write-up in history about him, and you can see his pedigree, which brings us to the 1976 National Field Champion, San Queen Honcho. He's on the cover of my dog food company, On The Hunt Dog Fuel. This dog is very special. That dog, Micah, that I told you I had, these are her OFA. Her grandpa was Honcho. She was my first big dog. I, I, she's the reason I looked up what a field champion was and started, this all before the internet. So I was calling people and trying to find any information I could. Um, and then it it's the reason I bought, you know, uh, Retriever DVDs. I, 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 so anyway, this dog, Sam Queen Honcho, uh, trained and owned by Judy Acock. Callback Retrievers, Texas Duck Dogs, On the Hunt Dog Fuel. We bought 100 acres right here in, in Valley View, Texas. It's a Gainesville address from Judy. So there's a street sign when you pull in that's green. It says Trumark Trail. So it's this dog is important to me. The legacy of Judy Acock and uh, what she did in the retriever field trial world, uh, winning a national championship in 1976 when retriever training was kind of a man's sport, uh, that she would go in there and dominate and holds records today. She trained the 1984 national amateur field champion, true mark zip code called Cody. Cody is second all time for all age points. He's got 444 and a half all age points in a second, the number one dog has 502 all-age points, River Oaks Corky. I could talk about this stuff all day long. I love Labradors and Retriever history. So anyway, let's go ahead and click right here. True Mark, Sam, I mean, uh, Sam Queen Honcho. It's before Judy added the True Mark name to all of her breeding program. There's the picture of Honcho that's on the cover of On the Hunt Dog Fuel. So go to onthehuntdogfuel.com, uh, order a sack of the 2618, with the cover of honcho, the the cover that has honcho on there, and you'll be feeding the same ingredients and dog food that Judy feeds to her champions today. Uh, we're very thankful to have her feeding our dog food. But anyway, here's the history of honcho, how he was initially trained, and who got him, and who ran him, and what happened with him. And then there's his look. Here's the 1966 and 1969 national champion on his pedigree. Guys, there's a long history of this. Pedigrees matter, genetics matter, do your research, do your homework. Let's keep going. There's one more database I want to show you. It's retriever results, okay? This is where you can look up a dog's active working record. You can see what he's been in, what he's passed, great profiles on there. Retrieverresults.com, right there. Now, you do have to have a subscription to use this website. It's cheap, 30, 40 bucks a year. You can research your dog. You can look at national champions. I mean, they do all kinds of great um, posts and articles and, and data collection. So you, it's well worth $40. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm already signed in. I'm going to click profile. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a dog that's currently on our truck okay, and competing with us. And his name is SDG. Now, his owner put SDG on there. Um, actually, hang on. It's KDM. That's this guy's breeding program, KDM. So he puts KDM 
apostrophe s showdown showdown gospel warrior and then at the end of his name he puts sdg on his dogs so kdm is his breeding program and then the registered name and then sdg sdg is a lat from a latin phrase sole deo gloria for the glory of god alone and the man that owns this dog lives his life for the glory of god alone and so he named this dog showdown gospel warrior and put sdg on there and that's why he has him on our truck competing in trials today. So that man's name is Hank Huff. He runs Kingdom Dog Ministries. Uh, so if you have a church and you want a guy to bring in some retrievers and speak and talk about a relationship with Jesus Christ in a captivating way, uh, reach out to kingdomdogministry.org. Uh, Okay, so here we go. KDM, Showdown Gospel Warrior. Again, at Retriever Results, you can look up the dog's profile. There's a picture of actually me with the dog with one of his ribbons. That's a Derby Jam ribbon. But you can see it's going to tell you this dog had four Derby points. And it shows that he got his qualified all-age status at the Tulsa Retriever Club trial. Um, and it tells the date he did that, April 23rd. Of, of last year so it hadn't even been a year ago that he did that it shows the owner but look up here you can click summary and you can see a summary of the events he's entered you can click detail and see very specific detailed information you can click pedigree and see the pedigree and then notables so let's just go to summary so on this summary it shows showdown started how many opens he started he hasn't finished any how many qualifyings he started how many he finished first place how many placements? He's got five placements in the qualifying with one first place. He's also had a second and I think three thirds. Uh, finished, you know, he's finished seven. It, it gives you percentages. Down here at the derbies, places, he had two derby placements. He started 10 derbies. He finished seven of the derbies. And so that's a that just gives you information. If you're in the hunt test side of the game, you're not uh, running field trials, you can also look up hunt test dogs and see their track record, how many junior passes they have, how many senior passes they have. It'll list what pro they're with. So go back to the scorecard right here, the pro trainer, Wade Cash and Texas Duck Dogs. So it shows that he's currently running on our truck and that the last trial we entered him in was May 28th, 2021. Okay, so you can click on pedigree and you can see the pedigree there. So guys, that's modern uh, databases, orthopedic foundation for animals, hunting lab pedigree, and retriever results. Um, the other place I'm going to tell you to go, entryexpress.net. There's a little search tab on the far right. You can search a dog's registered name and pull up every event they've ever been entered in. You can look and see where is the next AKC field trial, where is the next uh, hunt test. Those are public events that you can just show up to and watch and learn. If you're interested in getting a retriever, don't buy at the low end. Buy at the high end because your overall finished product is going to be much better. I tell people this. You're going to have this dog you're buying longer than your current car and maybe your next two cars. I mean, 12 to 15 years of long commitment. You're going to have this dog longer than your boat, probably longer than the address you have, and God forbid, maybe longer than the spouse you have. Uh, be careful about what you choose when you choose a puppy. Spend your money up and spend it wisely. Buy the best money you can, the best puppy you can afford, and do your research. Don't get duped by a breeder. And finally, Silver Labs are not recognized in AKC confirmation show rings, and there's actually a disqualification. They're not supposed to be registered. You actually have to lie on the puppy registration certificate uh, to register them. So I, I don't like what's gone on with the Silver Lab thing. If you want to create a designer breed and mix two breeds, that's fine. Be upfront about that and don't try to register them and dilute the purebred genetics that have been, you know, the AKC stud book, I think was sealed in 1927, 27 or 33. This, this isn't some light thing, purebred Labradors. People should take it seriously and breed carefully. You as a buyer have to do your homework. I hope this video has been helpful as I pull from 22 years of Labradors pro training now for 20 years. Um, took the first dog for pay at the age of 18 and, and just did a gun dog program. And now we have a, a huge gun dog program, texasduckdogs.com. Check it out. 
Um, check out our breeding website, callbackretrievers.com. Uh, look for the day when we release our dog training DVD, Eager Retriever. 12 Steps to an Eager Retriever Gun Dog Edition. 12 Steps to an Eager Retriever Hunt Test Edition. 12 Steps to an Eager Retriever Field Trial Edition. I, I'm, I'm hoping to develop all that at some point in the future. And then get life-changing ingredients for your dogs on the thehuntdogfield.com. There's a reason why some of the top pros in the country have switched their dogs to our dog food. It's expensive. Yes, it's expensive. If you just have one or two dogs, you need to pay up and get good ingredients. You are what you eat. Your dog should not have GMO, soy, cheap fillers, poultry byproduct, corn gluten meal. Those dogs in the long run, that that those ingredients in the long run, they might be digestible. They might make it through their digestive tract, but what is it leaving behind? So we have a corn-free, gluten-free grains, non-GMO, no byproducts, 100% USA sourced ingredients made right here in Texas. Give us a try, uh, uh, consideration. Support a local family-owned dog food company if you can. We're not big. We can't, you know, compete with those big guys with a cheap filler, so it is expensive food, but you'll see the difference once you try it. I hope this is helpful. I hope you are excited about your new puppy and, and finding a new puppy. I hope this helps educate you. Keep us in mind for training and breeding. We want to help. See you in the field and happy hunting.